<laughs> you do it. You do it. <laughs> this is how we need to start it. No, you do it. All right, we're 16 <laughs> weeks <you>. in. <laughs> Hello, wait, everybody. Wait, wait, stop. Don't say how many weeks in we are because we don't know what order these are going to air. We're recording right now, Terry. I know. Everybody's laughing at us. Right now. I know. Well, we're going to, Caleb's going to cut this out. <laughs> no, he's not. Caleb, if you're watching, do not cut this out. <laughs> We are possibly 16 weeks in. My math may be incorrect, and we still can't figure out how to do an intro. No. Well, welcome to The Difference of 13. Uh, we're excited to have everybody back listening this week, um, despite our uh, ineptitude at being able to even say hello. I know. You, you should probably pre-record like a nice intro. You probably should, other than just my mm -hmm. voice on that. Right. Uh, yeah. But yeah. anyway. We'll, um, we'll work on that. Yes. So congratulations to all of you who are still listening. Uh, you you deserve a prize. we got to do a giveaway at some point soon coming up. We do. Up. That would be fun. So, But uh, this week, what are we talking about? Sitting versus standing. Are you sitting or standing? I can't uh, tell. It's hard to tell with me. There's not much difference. But yes, I am sitting. <laughs> um, yeah, there's, there's a lot of buzz about the, the standing desk and whether or not that's Allegedly, according to the internet, it's the best thing ever. Because the internet knows everything. The internet is never wrong. So I'm curious as to what your feelings are. Well, I think I definitely feel like there's been a big industry boom for the office equipment uh, mm -hmm. industry. That everybody's getting rid of their sitting desks and putting in these uh, the standing desks. Yeah, and they're um, not cheap. No, um, I've also seen you got you can get some that like it's a desk at like a bike. Or a treadmill, so you can yeah, like walk on the I've treadmill the little, while you're doing that. Or the yeah, the little bike that you can put under your desk. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I'm not sure I could I could do the uh, the not, walking and typing or writing. That would be pretty messy. I've tried it and it's hard. Well, you, you doing two things at one time <laughs> walking is is a challenge anyway. But um, I think you know when I saw you, you mentioned the bike underneath the the table. When I worked in home health, you'd get uh, patients who were in wheelchairs. And so they'd put these little floor pedal things. Mm -hmm. I thought they were the silliest things in the world. But apparently that's, uh, we, you can sell anybody anything, I apparently. guess. Apparently. So I guess, yeah, I think that that's our question, right? Is the whole idea behind this movement is that sitting is terrible for you. Sitting is the new smoking. I think right. there was a new book that came out around that. Um, and that standing is the remedy for that. I can't tell how many people I get out you know, in clinic and they're saying, well, I got a standing desk, so that should help, right? Yeah. If it, if it were only that easy, just st I mean, I think sitting is, we all sit way too much. I know I do. But I don't think it's as simple as just standing versus sitting. Yeah, I mean, have you have you had a standing desk in the past? Yes. And, but unfortunately, that was when I was having hip surgery, so standing was not really... Would make that challenging. It's not really a good option for me. So, but some of my coworkers would use them, and I, I can't say that they like burned a ton of extra calories. Or it was nice to have a change in position to have that option to go from sitting or standing to move around a little bit. But I didn't see it being as being anything earth shattering. Well, actually, uh, um, Sissy pulled this for us uh, yeah. ahead of time. And, uh, Healthline. I'm um, not sure who they are, but assuming they're a reputable <laughs> source, <laughs> um, they said that if a 143 pound person stood for six hours a day instead of standing, I, I don't. I'd be very curious to know why they picked 143 that's, pounds. That's a very precise number there. I guess, so don't don't fluctuate to water weight. Get right. water with water weight, anyone. <laughs> but that would that would only gain them an extra 54 calories burned in the day. Um, so okay. I'm not sure how accurate that information is. But so you could have an extra bite of a cookie? I, I guess, yeah. yeah. Wow, that's so clearly, insignificant. Assuming that that's relatively, you know, I'm not sure if they took a 143-pound person and had them stand for six hours and then had them sit for six hours. Um, but that's really not a huge difference from a caloric standpoint. You know, even yeah. if you put that out over five, like a five-day work week, that's only, what, 250 calories? Maybe just a little over that. Yeah. That's less than a, that's all I don't know. I guess depending on the kind of bread you're eating, that might be less than a piece of bread. Yeah. <laughs> um, now, what what about as far as your body mechanics? So, okay, it's not burning a lot of calories, but is it significantly 
different for your body mechanics to be standing versus sitting? Well, I think that's the I think that's the second piece of this, right? Is everybody the two concerns that everybody has are if I sit, I'm going to get fat, so I'm going to stand because I'll burn more calories because I'll be mm-hmm. doing things that way. And then the second piece is if I am standing, then I'm more active, my muscles are going to be more engaged. I'm less likely to have all these musculoskeletal aches and pains. Uh, And I think the challenge of that or the problem with that theory is that you're assuming that when you stand, when you stand, you're going to stand biomechanically correct for the entirety of that time that you're standing. Uh, So I think if we preface, you know, we'll go further into this today, but you know, the recommendation of most intelligent healthcare providers will be who understand musculoskeletal Mm -hmm. uh, movement is that, our bodies were designed to move. They were not designed right. to be in any position for a prolonged period of time. So sitting for 30 minutes, getting up and walking and going back and sitting for 30 minutes, getting up and walking for five. If you did that all day, that is way better than standing for six hours. <laughs> you know, even that if you're just sense. walking to go get a drink of water at the mm-hmm. water cooler, uh, we were not made to sit still or stand still. I think that's the issue is it's not necessarily the position you're in. It's the still. Yeah, the not moving Right. So, and I think in sitting to a degree, you have less joints to worry about really from your waist down. That's all weightless. So there's really nothing to worry Mm -hmm. about in your lower body. It's going to be more so kind of core and spinal position, head position. Uh, If you guys are watching on YouTube, you know, if I'm at a desk and my head's forward, um, like my chin's sticking out, or if let's say I work um, as a, as a receptionist or administrative position and I'm on a phone all day, my phone's always to the right, and I'm repeatedly going to the right to answer the phone. Mm-hmm. That's why a lot of places have gone to headsets. Uh, but if my computer, you know, if you guys can see here, you know, if I'm set up this way and I'm constantly talking to Terry and coming back to the left, you know, so if you're just listening, I have my computer to the left and Terry's to my right. I'm talking to Terry to the right while my arms and torso are rotated left. So I think what you're looking for, are you in a certain position that is the same repeatedly for long periods right. of time. And th- those are, uh, well, actually, we're going to link a video we, that we shot um, for this week on proper ergonomic setups for sitting and for standing. So regardless of what you're doing, what your workplace allows or will do for you, mm-hmm. um, we've kind of give, we give you a bunch of recommendations in terms of how to set up your workstation. Right. And you don't have to go out and buy fancy office equipment you can there's ways to raise your computer up or to change the height of your chair how would you do that what would you suggest for people well to to lift the computer up i mean you can stick books under there you can yoga blocks there there's a lot of different things i being short um sometimes have a thick cushion that i'll put on the seat of the chair if the chair doesn't go up high enough for me so that i'm not typing with you know my keyboard under my chin t-rex arms little t-rex arms yeah (laughs) yeah now, yeah, now I, if you I'll do start that. out the day pretty good, like, you know, sitting up straight. And then I notice I start leaning into it and it's a, trying to remember to, you know, stay straight. I think that brings up an important point that depending on your body type, you're going to have different setup requirements. Right. So we work at the desk, you know, as you guys can see in the video here, where this is one of, we have two of these desks. This was a huge long table. We basically cut it in half. Um, this has a very different relative to my body profile than to yours right so for me you know even with me i'm still actually up a little bit but if i'm working on my laptop my head is going to be angled down Um, so definitely check out the video because we definitely we go through all of you know where head position be you know screen should be eye level or even some people would say an inch or two higher than eye level um shoulders should be relaxed elbows at 90 degrees hands straight out in front of you pretty much uh Knees, hips should all, both be at 90 degrees. Feet should be flat on a surface. Um, so I think for the instance you talked about, if you have to raise your chair up because this desk is too tall, well, then you need to bring in books or something underneath your right. feet so your feet aren't dangling. Yeah. Um, so I think those are important things to talk about. And the video definitely hopefully is a resource for all of you. Um, but depending on your body type, you may need different accommodations for the same desk than your 10 other coworkers based on where they are. Especially when you're 13 inches shorter than your coworker. That is true. Yeah. <laughs> um, and I mean, I've used that again, being short, I, I'm always trying to adapt. I, at one job I had, it was a box of printer paper 
that was just about the right height for my feet, and I just kept that under my desk, and that's that was my little footrest. You guys were always out of printer paper, huh? We were always out of printer paper. <laughs> Everybody needed to come under my desk to get it. That's funny. So now, I guess that's kind of our sitting, you know, talking about sitting, not standing. Mm-hmm. I think you've made a good point. It doesn't need to be fancy with the sitting accommodations. And my standing desk is I go out into the floor and when I use our plyo boxes. Yeah. <laughs> just put my computer on there and I can stand for 20, 30 minutes while I'm out there just for a change of scenery. Yeah. Um, you know, what are some other options that people have or what should people be looking for in a standing desk? Well, again, you want that, that correct body position. You don't want the T-Rex arms with the computer up too high or too low. But again, you can use boxes or blocks or stacks of books or whatever to get it to your right. Well, and I think that's where wireless keyboards, mm-hmm. wireless mouses, all of those things come into play in terms of being important. Um, you know, for us to yeah. to be doing. So, um, sorry, I had a little moment there. Yeah. <laughs> well, and then um, so, and then with the standing. Uh, positions, I think, where people kind of get lost is how to stand. And right. I'll let you talk about this from a experience standpoint with all your hip surgeries and what I'm always on you on in terms of when you're standing still, what are the common things that you do? Because that's I, what most people do. I stand horribly and I know it. I, part of it is because I've had so many surgeries on the left side, I tend to always shift my weight to the right because I've been not weight bearing on the left for so long that I developed that bad habit. And also, when I stand for too long, it hurts to, to put too much weight on the left. So I shift to the right, which then throws my back is out of alignment. My, you know, my hips are off to one side, and it's just not, oh, for a long term, it's not a good body position. So I should have both feet on the floor, right? Mm-hmm. Eat Weight equally distributed. Mm-hmm. Hips should not be cocked out to one side or the other. Yeah, that's what most people do is they'll cross yeah. a foot over and kind of yeah, that's you know, what lean I do. on, put their arm on something mm-hmm. and kind of stick their hip out to the side. Um, it, those are very common ways that people will, will stand. And the reason for that is that it really is because people, when you do that, you're just basically resting on passive structure. So you're resting on your ligaments uh, you're, you're relying on the structure of your bony, you know, skeleton mm-hmm. to provide that stability, as opposed to you're actually using your intrinsic muscles and the stabilizers. Um, so your body's lazy inherently, right? I guess you c- could call it lazy, or you could call it efficient. Your body's going to look for the, <laughs> the basic, easiest way, the easiest way possible. What is the minimal amount of effort that it can put through to complete the task that you're asking it to? So if that task is standing. You know, sticking your hip out to the side, leaning up against mm-hmm. a wall, um, shifting your weight one way versus the other. Those are all common things that you'll see. And if you do have a standing desk, if you don't do any of that, I want to hear from you um, because I'd be curious as to what your secret is. Because 99.9% of people at a standing desk do something like that throughout the day. You know, if they're right. standing, I don't care if you're standing there for, you know, I stand at my desk for six hours. It's been great for me. The challenge is if you're shifting weight one way or the other, you're going to start to develop hip or ankle, you know, foot issues. I think that's going to be the next thing we start to see is more and more people stand still for long periods of time. You're going to start to see you know, other issues popping up. And, um, and what kind of shoes are you wearing when you're standing? If you're trying to stand in stilettos for, that you know, be tough. four hours, five hours straight, that's it's going to get really uncomfortable. It's not good for your feet. So. It isn't. I think the only possible benefit for standing is people will probably get tired of standing. So they'll go move just to get out of being tired. Right. So to a degree, standing probably has a built-in alarm mechanism where you get tired, so you're going to go and move, or at least you'll go sit down because mm-hmm. you're tired from standing. Uh, so at least, whereas sitting, you can sit for hours and you're not going to get tired unless you get stiff from looking one way. But Yeah. Well, that's what happens to me. So what I try to do is because we have clients come in every hour, that's sort of my signal of I've been sitting too long. So when somebody comes in, I get up and I go say hello, or I'll just go take a walk to the water fountain, but it gets me up out of the desk and moving at least a little bit. Yeah, I think we will talk, I think an alarm is huge, whatever that may be for you at work, whether it's every time your coworker goes by to use the bathroom or 
Set it, an alarm on your phone. Yeah, set for, an alarm. For every hour, 45 minutes, whatever. Exactly. And I think that's the case. You really don't want to stay in one position maximum 45 minutes. You know, ideal probably half hour. But, you know, obviously if you're at work, you may be in the groove of something and you want to get it done. But more often than not, you're trying to be up and moving, you know, 30 to 45 minutes, um, changing positions, doing different things um, from that side, of, from mm-hmm. that standpoint. Um, so does the Grim Reaper, does he stand or sit? Chases people. That's what it does. It does. Yeah. I just think the Grim Reaper sit, just doesn't move. I think the Grim, Reaper, the Grim Reaper stays still. I think that's the answer to the question of today's episode. Yeah, that's true. This is not really the sitting or the standing or how much lumbar support you have in your in your chair. That's my favorite. People come in. Yeah. Well, I sit for work, but I have a great lumbar support. I, I have that fancy desk chair that costs two thousand dollars. Well, that's great. Well, great. I mean, but your computer's still down here, mm-hmm. and your or your on your you know your tablet yeah. or your You're still iPhone. hunched over and right forward head, forward shoulders. Mm-hmm. See, I'm trying to put my shoulders yeah. down. <laughs> and, and I think then when you think about a fitness routine, depending on what your body position and work situation is, your work your workout routine should combat that. Mm-hmm. So if you do have a desk job, if you're sitting. Um, or at a, you know, you say you're at a computer on your phone a lot, you're driving a lot, your workout routine really should be about opening up, you know, opening right. up the chest, extending that thoracic spine, uh, you know, lengthening the front of the hip, the muscles in the front of the kind hip. Kind of going the opposite direction of what you right. spend so most of your day So I think fetal position is kind of where most of us live in terms right. of work. <laughs> in our workout routines, we should go totally mm-hmm. opposite and promote extension and, and promote using those core muscles in unstable positions so that when we do have to sit for 20, 30 minutes, or you know, say we got to sit for three hours, it's not the end of the world because we've been training our body to go otherwise and we at least have a, a counterbalance to that. Um, so, yeah, so I think that's that's my answer is the Grim Reaper doesn't sit or stand. He probably does mm-hmm. both. But if you stay in one of those positions too long, he's going to get you. Yeah. So you got to stay on the move. Stay away from him. And uh, save your, you guys don't need for crazy fancy stand up and sit down desks. If you're a business owner, look at creative solutions. Uh, you don't need to get the latest and greatest. At the end of the day, your employee is still either going to be sitting or standing. Right. Um, Just it's good if you can give them options of different workstations. Uh, yeah, give give your employees options. I think. Education is huge. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you, like I said, definitely check out the ergonomic setup video that we have. It's uh, a that good we'll, video. That we'll be linking uh, from here. I think it's probably what, five minutes or so. So that doesn't mm-hmm. take a ton of your time. Uh, a lot of good nuggets in there in terms of how to set things up, ideas for uh, quick solutions, uh, you know, whether it's a, a book to raise, raise the ground up to your feet or uh, putting your computer up on a couple books and then using a wireless keyboard. Uh, but definitely, I think education is huge. I think giving your employees opportunities and encouraging them to take advantage of those opportunities mm-hmm. to stay moving throughout the day. You know, whether it's you set a policy every hour, you got to get up and take a lap around the office or get a drink of water and you know, whatever it may be. Right. I think really trying to instill those pieces um, you know, in, into your workplace. And that actually is a great lead in right. to next week where we are going to be talking about great ways to stay healthy at work. Yeah, there's, it's easier than you think. It doesn't have to be complicated. It doesn't have to be expensive. And that's, uh, that's what we'll be talking about next week. So if you are an employer, you work somewhere, which should be everybody, right. I hope. <laughs> um, or well, they could be students. They could be students. Well, you're still sitting at a desk. It's right? basically it's, work. It still applies. Uh, or if you own a business and you do have employees and, you, and you're really looking at trying to keep them healthy, definitely tune in next week uh, where we're going to go over a lot of great ways and simple ways, uh, mm-hmm. as Terry said to help you stay healthy, stay engaged, miss fewer days of work or school, um, at least unplanned days. I know there's always the planned day of hooky or, or yeah. so. You know, you've, you've been playing a lot of that lately. Right. So it, it was really <laughs> tough to nail her down to get her in here to, to record the podcast. She's been traveling all over the place. But, uh, but yeah, I think thanks for listening. As always, if you guys have any questions, comments, please uh, shoot us an email. Uh, mm-hmm. Check out the website, uh, parforsuccess.com, P A R. Number four, success.com. The difference of 13 is right there under the podcast tab. YouTube, five, five stars, five thumbs stars. up. Uh, five stars on all of your you know, iTunes, wherever you're getting your, your uh, podcast from. Lots of thumbs up on YouTube, lots of stars wherever you're listening. And please send us comments. We have actually, have actually had a couple of great ideas for some upcoming episodes. That, I know. So send we'll us your ideas, yourself. your thoughts, um, what we could do better. 
We can take it. Constructive criticism. You can. I don't know yeah, if I can. Yeah. But, but uh, thanks for uh, being with us this week. Uh, hopefully you guys are all staying healthy at work and moving. Don't stay in one spot too long. Right. We're going to get up and move for a minute. All right. We'll talk to you guys later. Bye.